Hey everybody, welcome to EmpireCV.tv. We just had SAC Anime last weekend. It was a lot of fun. Thank you to everyone who came down. Thank you to everyone who stopped by the booth. Thank you to everyone who came dressed up because it made it a lot of fun. And uh, you'll see it again. If you haven't tried out SAC Anime, make sure you do. Also, try out SACCon. Uh, the next one is in October. We'll obviously have more info for that. A couple things going on around the store. First, well, not just around the store, the 11th, Thursday night is CrockerCon. A bunch of local writers, artists, uh, stores are going to be at the Crocker Museum just showcasing comics. So it's something you're going to want to look into. It's in the evening. We have more information on our Facebook and our website. And also on the 20th here in the store, we have our second annual Creative Women Minicon. We've got a bunch of great ladies coming down. Everything from novelists, comic writers, comic artists, painters. And uh, we have Sarah Stone coming in who is an IDW Transformers Windblade artist. She's going to be coming down with all kinds of uh, her own prints and things like that. So it's a day you don't want to miss. And again, as we get closer, you're gonna have a lot more information, but you can find out more at empirescomics.com. So this one I need to show you, Union Street Choir. Yesterday, we started the first day of our Kickstarter. It's till the end of the month on the 30th at 8 p.m. But you're going to want to go over and check out the tiers now because, of course, some of them are limited. It is a combination of issues one and two, uh, variants, baseball bats, uh, wood slat, uh, hangings for the wall, a little bit of everything. So it's worth checking out. It's worth going on over to. And more importantly, it went up at 8 p.m. last night. And by that night, we had already received a email from Kickstarter saying that they'd moved us to the staff pick uh, section. So they liked it enough to give us a little bit of extra coverage there. So please check it out. Union Street Choir, it's myself and Nooligan. You can find them everywhere under N-O-O-L-I-G-A-N, Nooligan. So thank you guys. Now this week is huge. So in order for me not to give you a 15, 20 minute video, we're gonna hit some highlights and go over a few of the major ones. The one, this was beautiful. I was, I was not sure if I wanted to actually touch this one. You know, how long is it gonna be back or be before he comes back? But McNiven drew me in and the story held me. It was great. Wolverine no longer has a healing factor. He's slowly dying because of metal in his body, the damage that's been done, the radiation. Every time he pulls his claws and brings it back in, he's bringing uh, blood-soaked claws back into his body. It, it, things aren't going so well. Reed breaks it down for him. And then, knowing that word is going to get out, and he knows people are going to be coming for him, he secludes himself on an island, and all hell breaks loose from there. It's really, really good, and McNiven's artwork is obviously fantastic. Only one Avengers title out this week, which is pretty odd. Captain America, he's still old, no longer has the Super Soldier Serum. we got some Arnim Zola going on there. Um, uh, Jet Black uh, still there, Falcon. Rocket Raccoon, I don't think much need be said about this. Scotty Young is writing and drawing. The first two issues were really a lot of fun. And it's set within the Marvel Universe, but it almost feels like something that's a little cartoony and just a really great book. Star-Lord, they're doing all kinds of Guardian stuff. The end of Original Sin. If you're not caught up, just like fast forward 30 seconds. So, The Watcher's dead. Uh, they obviously don't care. The Watcher's dead. Turns out that Nick Fury is the one who killed him. And now the end of this one changes things drastically. It was a really neat little twist as the heroes who were hunting for who did it. And Nick Fury, every version of Nick Fury we have ever known has been an LMD. Nick Fury has actually been like a space, I don't want to say pirate, like space cop. And he's old. So it was just a neat little twist. And they're, well, I don't want to say anything. I was about to tell you something else, but we'll leave that to Brian Wood. Warren Ellis only did six issues, but you guys will know that Brian Wood is a great replacement for him, and I think that this style of a book, this street-level hero with no superpowers, it's a great place for Wood, and I think you guys are going to be happy with that replacement. The X-Ladies are out in space. X-Factor, probably the second best X-Men book. All new X-Men's probably my favorite. Peter David, I've talked enough about him. The Inhumans are in this issue, though. This is the team-up you've all been clamoring for. Uh, not really, but you've got Hawkeye versus Deadpool. And it's it's not going to be for the Hawkeye fans, because this is not your Matt Fraction, uh, you know, critically acclaimed book. This one's just going to be those two going head-to-head. -head. Probably the last original Sin tie-in to go along with that. We got some, some ultimates. I got to speed up a little bit. 
All right, uh, if you guys have not kept up on this, this one was actually really important, especially to this month for DC. Futures End jumps five years ahead. Batman Beyond has come back in time to try and stop the Omax from taking over the planet. You've got uh, Constantine, as you can see on the cover, you've got Superman, you've got Shazam, you've got um, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, a whole host of people. There are tons of laws in place to prevent superheroes from doing things. The OMAC project on Cadmus Island has actually been capturing people who illegally use them. And of course, there's the rebellion. And more importantly, leading into this month's DC, every single book in the DC universe is a Future's End book. So a lot of your titles you won't even get. They're going to be things like, these are all, of course, books that you will get. Uh, let's see if I can find one. No, not this week. Starting next week, there's going to be books. Uh, show, show them all the best. I will, I will. But, so, every book takes place five years in the future. You've got the hall, or the 3D covers, and it's going to show you what these characters are doing during that future's end time period. So, you've got Grayson, you've got Swamp Thing, Action Comics, and of course they each change as you look at them. Batwing, Phantom Stranger, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Aquaman, and then just to go along with everything, you've got Conan in this cave. And Conan's awesome, by the way. Oh, Earth 2. And of course, because it's weekly, you've got Batman Eternal. And Justice League has two covers. You've got your traditional cover and you've got your Darwin Cook cover. Why would you not choose the Darwin Cook cover? I'm, I'm just saying. Okay, this one. It's not my top indie pick because I'll show you what that is in a minute. But this was actually having me laugh out loud. This is not for the kids. This is definitely an adult book, but it's the most ridiculous premise ever. You've got uh, King uh, Tiger who eats cheeseburgers in space. And I know it sounds stupid, but you'd have to read the way he delivers it. His crab people on Earth. You've got uh, NASA setting up a defense force that prevents the astro farmers from trying to leave. You know, it's oppressive NASA. They need places to, uh, to go. But the way he delivers it, the comedy in here, I, I was literally laughing out loud. I would read you a couple lines in here, except it's not appropriate. I think this one's really worth checking out. The art is neat and the story was hilarious. Silent Hill, I got a chance to play the demo on the PS4 for the new game and it's ridiculously freaky and it may get me to purchase a PS4. Sidekick, they're jumping in on the action as well. Straczynski, got a little MLP action, uh, as those in the know call it. Saw a lot of MLP at the anime convention. Um, a lot of people just walking around with the ponies. Uh, I have a picture that I, uh, so I'll show you in a minute, you guys, uh, of some people in normal clothing, but with like just plastic horse heads on. I assume they, they were into the ponies. Miracle Man's still bagged because it is brutal. But, oh, that's the pick of the week, so. X-Con, Dr. Mirage, this was a lot of fun. So. She's someone who's lost her husband. She's someone who can connect with the dead. She's into the occult. She often lends out her services to people who need it. But she's her husband died and she's never found him. She's never seen him. She doesn't know what happened to him. So it's a mystery that really kind of pulls you into her. Then she gets hired by somebody, a rich guy of course, who doesn't give her all the info and sets her on a course of, you know, the money's too good. But the most important thing about this book um, that's really gonna draw you in, really gonna compel you and keep you coming back each issue is that she owns a pug. <laughs> We've got the Dark Tower starting up again. Concrete Park. Some Buffy. Some Big Trouble. I don't think enough, or nothing needs to be said about either one of those two. They shorted me last week, but I have more Black Sciences in, so they probably weren't here when you came. There will be some now. Should have put this with Buffy, some Angel. But the indie pick of the week, the book that I am most excited about is Shadow and Grendel. Shadow's a fun character, but Grendel, Matt Wagner is the man. You guys are gonna love this. This is essentially what if Batman was evil. He lost his parents when he was young, uh, highly educated, highly trained, but decided instead of uh, stopping people that he was going to take over the East Coast mob and go from there. This was long before Nemesis, so I don't want any comments that say, oh, Mark Millar already did that. Uh, this book is going to be great. Wagner draws and writes it. So thank you very much, you guys. If you made it all the way to the end of this 20-minute video, don't forget the 11th at the Crocker Con, the 20th here for Creative Women Mini Con, Union Street Choir on Kickstarter. Thank you very much.